Hello, welcome to the It's Just Us radio show. I am Charlene Bowden. So glad you're joining me for another broadcast. We are in a new season. We have new shows on all of our productions and we have great guests that will be coming by to talk about a variety of topics and share some information about their lives, what they have going on. And of course, what we always want to capture is that story that how did you get from your beginning to your end, just capturing that middle component. And joining me today, I have two great guests. We're going to be discussing a couple of topics that are kind of related to the health care of children. Joining me is Dr. Teresa Cerulli. She is a psychiatrist, and we'll be talking about the impacts of attention deficit hyper disorder, hyperactivity disorder in the um, the day-to-day routines of families and especially with it now being the school year um, how that impacts the regular flow of households from the summer transitioning into the fall and then into the um, full school year and then joining us later in the show is neonatologist Dr. Jennifer Arnold you may have seen Dr. Arnold on Oprah or the Today Show Dr. Oz, she's been on The Doctors. Dr. Arnold will be with us today discussing the importance of scheduling um, vaccinations for our babies. Not necessarily the pros and cons of, of vaccinations, whether to vaccinate or not to vaccinate, but just for those who desire to vaccinate their babies, making sure that they're done in a timely manner. We will talk to these two ladies in a few minutes. You're listening to the It's Just Us radio show. I'm Charlene Bowden. Please stay tuned. I'll be right back. Thank you so much for coming back to join us. And joining me now is Dr. Teresa Cerulli. Hi, Dr. Cerulli. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderfully well, thank you. And thank you so much for being on this show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, I hadn't really thought about the transition for young people that are living with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder from summer to the school time. So thank you so much for being on to talk about this important topic. And what are the most common and difficult challenges for the parents and the children at this time of the year? The transition back to school can be difficult for everyone, uh, both <laughs> yes. children and the adults. Uh, and with and without ADHD. So the transition is, is often challenging. But with with Kids with ADHD, it's, it's all that much more of a hurdle sometimes, and, and, uh, and that's because the core features of ADHD, which are inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity, uh, it's often like putting a square peg in a round hole to ask these kids to sit still in a classroom for many hours a day uh, doing more rote activities compared to the lazy, uh, lazy days of summer and the, and, the, and the freedom that one has. So it is a tough, tough transition for a lot of kids with, with ADHD, which, by the way, there are many. Um, in other words, the statistics on ADHD may, may surprise you. 11% of children in the U.S. have ADHD, and that translates to about 6 million children. So it's, wow. a, it's a topic, I think, that really impacts a lot of families. Absolutely. You know, when I hear percentages of, of people dealing with 
whether it's ADHD or any other type of issue across you know, the, the United States. When you hear number 11, it seems low. But when you put it in perspective, that's a lot of people. It, it, it is. It is. So, a lot, so hopefully we can be helpful to the many families uh, cha- that are challenged right now in the back-to-school time. And both children and adults, adults can have ADHD as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. So how do you recommend that parents prepare for the school year? And also, if you can, how soon should the parents start preparing? Yeah. Uh, practice makes perfect, so the sooner the better in, in terms of uh, getting ready for the transition. But I do recommend that parents schedule a meeting with your child's teacher, if you can, mm-hmm. a week or two before school starts. Um, if they're not available, then certainly a short time into the beginning of the academic year. And, and the, really, this is an, the meeting is an opportunity for you to describe to the teacher and, and collaborate with the teacher what are the specific challenges your child with ADHD has. Because mm-hmm. the core symptoms I mentioned, the inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity, can present in very different ways from person to person and to different degrees. Some kids have a lot of the behavioral challenges, the real impulsive hyperactive symptoms, and some kids have more of the sort of quiet, daydreamy, um, inattentive, staring out the window, and, but might, no one mm-hmm. might have noticed because there's not a behavioral issue there. So mm-hmm. meet mm-hmm. with your child's teacher, describe what you see at home, describe what strategies have been helpful. The teacher may be able to use some of those same strategies that you've found successful at home. Um, the mm-hmm. teacher may be able to use those in the classroom. And then finally, of course, any of the prior experiences from previous school years that you can share with the teacher that have been, you know, successful strategies in the classroom, helpful and or not so helpful um, things. The teachers really want to try and, and assist, and, and they're an important part of the treatment team. So try and, mm-hmm. try and include them from the get-go. Sure. And you mentioned the treatment team. So what can the child's doctor, uh, what role can the doctor play in all of the, uh, in this transition as well? Yes, yes. The, the doctor is also a very important part of that treatment team. <laughs> mm-hmm. ADHD is a medical condition. It's not a learning disability. I think people get confused mm-hmm. about that. ADHD mm-hmm. is a medical condition. And so meeting with your doctor is, is very important. And the doctor really brings a, a, the, another perspective, the medical perspective. There's been a lot of research and advancements um, and developments in the field of ADHD since I started ten, uh, 15 years ago now, and, and the options available for treatment are, are many um, compared to what we had, again, you know, even 10 years ago. So meet mm-hmm. with the doctor, get the most updated information and research and the AD, ADHD condition in and of itself, which we now have a much better understanding of. Yes, and what are some of the advances in the field? For example, I've, I've worked with Neos Therapeutics, um, company that developed Xenus XRODT, which is it's a stimulant medication that it's an orally disintegrating tablet form. Um, the orally disintegrating tablet dissolves in the mouth, does not require water. Um, you okay. dissolve in the mouth and you swallow it. It's a stimulant, so it is a controlled substance. Uh, which means that the FDA recognizes there is risk with abuse and dependence with stimulant medications. And, uh, and so you want to really collaborate with your doctor, again, from the medical perspective, to minimize risks, uh, to safely use a medication. Uh, this particular one at Zenith XRODT is FDA approved for ages six and above, so for adult use as well as, as children. Uh, mm, okay. but, but proceeding safely, it requires the doctor's input. And just thinking about what you can do at home, uh, make sure you store your child's ADHD medications in a safe place to avoid sure. misuse um, right. or even accidental misuse with medications. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, where can people go to get more information? So besides talking with your doctor, uh, there's mm-hmm. the website at zenisxrodt.com for more specifics about the medication I mentioned. Um, in general, for ADHD, CHAD, Children and Adults with ADHD, is a, is a wonderful organization, another great resource for uh, general information regarding ADHD. Great. Thank you so much. So we just pulled this team together and everybody's communicating that can lead to much happier, healthier, smoother transitions for the little person as they get ready to go back into the classroom this year. 
Absolutely, and, and mom, dad, you're the leaders of that treatment team, and, and, uh, and this is a very treatable condition, so that's the good news. And uh, so I really recommend pulling together with, in a positive way all of your, your resources and uh, putting those, those guardrails in place to help your child succeed, which often, uh, most of the time, things, as I said, this is a treatable condition. I really want you to look at it from the positive perspective. These are, mm-hmm. Your kids are energetic and creative and out-of-the-box thinkers and, um, and really can excel. I think that's a good point to bring out. It's a, it's a positive thing. If we can make it a positive thing, that's really great. Thank you so much, Dr. Sorelli. I really appreciate your time and information on this topic. My pleasure. Thank you for having me today. As well. Thank you so much. Take good care. Well, hello there, everybody. You're listening to It's Just Us, the radio show with a difference. Hosted by the one and only Charlene Balden. Let's check back in with Charlene and her special guest in the hot seat today, shall we? Good morning, Charlene. Or afternoon now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dr. Arnold. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Oh, it's wonderfully well. Thank you so much. And Thank you for joining me to discuss this important issue. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So why is vaccination such an important issue for you personally? Well, thank you for asking. From my perspective, vaccines are near and dear to my heart. Um, It is a critical element to maintaining health, health for infants, uh, newborns, children, even adults today. And uh, on a personal level, I'm a parent, first and foremost, and I have two kids who uh, we adopted from China and India, and for, for their, uh, you know, from their perspective, from their countries, vaccines were not a given. And so one of the very mm-hmm. first things that we had to do was when we brought them home is to get them up to date and caught up on their immunizations to maintain the best health that we can. Secondly, mm-hmm. I'm a neonatologist, so I'm a physician who takes care of critically ill newborns, and I've had the misfortune to care for babies Uh, sadly, that have suffered from the potential life-threatening consequences of these preventable diseases. Oh, that's very important. I can see why it's so important to you. Um, you, You've lived it firsthand. Um, So the conversation that's happening now isn't to focus so much on safety and the importance of vaccinations, but more to focus on the timing and staying on time with the schedule of the doses and things of that nature. Why is that important to for the timing and staying on schedule? Well, thank you. Yes, I'm very excited about raising awareness about the scheduling, the dosing, the frequency, the timing of these immunizations. And that's because when you give these vaccinations is actually critical for them to be most effective. And what I'm excited to partner with Pfizer about is the opportunity to raise awareness for that timing. Specifically, if you can imagine any infant or newborn, there are many different things that they're growing and changing on a developmental timeline, right? So, for example, babies, they might crawl or walk or coo, smile, talk at very specific timelines in their development. And the immune system is really no different. It has its own timeline, and it's developing as it should in any infant or child. And Mm -hmm. so when vaccines are most effective uh, and the dosing intervals that they're recommended is based on that developmental milestone for the immune system. So it's really critical for parents to understand that timeline so that they can make sure and ensure that their child is getting their immunizations when they're needed and when they're actually most effective. And what can happen if if a child misses a dose, a scheduled dose? Great question. If a child misses a dose, first and foremost, I tell my uh, patients, families, uh, and even friends who ask not to panic. Um, It actually is something that you can uh, fix with a catch-up program. So talk to your pediatrician, call your pediatrician when you identify that you've missed a dose or you might be behind, and have Mm -hmm. a conversation with them to plan out a catch-up schedule so that you can get your child back on track. And that's something that I had to do with my kids coming from China and India because Mm -hmm. they were a little behind. So we we made a plan to to catch them up. The plan is always appropriate, always appropriate. So there, yes. <laughs> so there is a program, and I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. The, is it Twiddin program? Yes, 
Yes. So basically, one of the most important things that I hope to share with parents is the opportunity to get the facts, get reliable information about immunizations so that they're Mm -hmm. empowered to make the right decisions in the health of their child. And part of that is through a great website that I think is very user-friendly for very busy parents. I myself find it very helpful called babyvaxfacts.com. That's baby vaxfacts.com. And within that website, there are great resources for parents in terms of the timing, the schedule, the different types of diseases that these vaccines are intended to prevent. And in addition to that is the Twibbing campaign. So this is an opportunity for all parents to essentially raise awareness and put a Twibbing, which is like a ribbon, on your profile uh, uh-huh. basically photo of your Facebook or your Twitter pages mm-hmm. um, and help uh, celebrate that milestone of, you know, immunizing your child. So it's really meant to be uh, via social media a celebration campaign uh, and to spread the awareness about the importance of vaccinations. Got it. And we love to celebrate everything else on, on social media, so why not celebrate this important cause as well? Absolutely. It's no time like the present to do that. And, you know, it's taking steps to help protect all of our infants and children and even other uh, individuals that are in their adult life uh, from these preventable diseases. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Arnold. Can you give the website one more time, please? Absolutely. It's babyvaxfacts.com, and that's baby, V-A-X, facts.com. And like I said, it's a great resource for busy parents uh, who just want to know, uh, have the you know, answers to their questions. Great. Thank you so much again, and all the best to you in all of your endeavors. I appreciate your time, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me today. Take care. Take good care. It's just us radio show. Thanks for tuning in to the It's Just Us radio show. For guest consideration, show ideas, or to contact any of our guests, please email us at itsjustusradio at gmail.com. Also, visit our website, itsjustusradio.com, to connect with us on social media. It's Just Us Radio is brought to you by It's Just Us Productions.